Prowling through the woodlands and cornfields, preying on helpless livestock and deer, this bold silver and brown furred beast with the head of a wolf and body of a man goes by many names. The beast of Bray Road, the Michigan dog man, the bear wolf or man wolf, or even the werewolf. Sometimes just a wolf that walked alone on two legs, other times a man who willingly committed sorcery and made a pact with the devil, or even a man cursed by God himself. This man or beast has been feared since the dawn of man and has many origins and legends. This is getting deeper than I expected, and we're only a few seconds in. <laughs> so it sounds like there's a lot more to the werewolf than uh, probably your average pop culture would, would anticipate. Definitely. And more than I anticipated, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of excited because you said that one of them was a Michigan dog man. Yes. That means that like we have a home state. Representative. Like yeah, we, <laughs> Represent. He's, he's, yeah. Part of the, <laughs> he's part of the werewolf parliament. Welcome back, ghouls and goyles. Hi. To Between a Rock and Olympus. Episode two. Where we talk about creepy, creepy creatures in the, the dark. Yeah, in the dark. <laughs> and the mythology behind them. Yes. We like to discuss mythology of varying time frames, whether it be ancient, like your grandmother, or, <laughs> or recent. Like Corona babies. Yes. <laughs> the quarantines, <laughs> if you haven't heard of them. Wash your hands. Had your kids, had your wife, wash your hands. Starting with the earliest writings, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Odyssey, from as early as the late 8th century of BCE, even quoted in the Book of Daniel in the Bible. So that's... That's, that's, that's old. That's how far that's, back we're going. That's really old. <laughs> this is like pre-Jesus. Yeah. Werewolves are older than Jesus. <laughs> so we're going to start with the first werewolf ever written about, or supposedly the first werewolf. Um, his name was King Lycon. In Greek mythos, uh, King Lycon was the king of Arcadia, who became famous for his numbers of wives, among which were even nymphs. So he's a homo. <clears throat> Pretty much. <laughs> King Lycon was known to be a deceitful and mischievous man. Zeus disguised himself as a common laborer and came to Arcadia to judge what sort of King Lycon truly was. We get Zeus involved. Yeah. This is the big guns. Yeah. Just to give a little backstory, King Lycon, he is the son of the first man <laughs> ever ever just the first man this is disguise was unfortunately foiled because people could uh sense his divinity and so <laughs> how does one sense i'm not that? sure um they, his eyes are glowing <laughs> he looks I, he has I, a lightning bolt hanging out of his pocket i see it he's going to throw <laughs> it at you later in an alley <laughs> I I imagine him just glowing and people like obviously being like, uh, you're glowing. You're not a He's person. He's either radioactive or Jesus. <laughs> or Jesus. Because <laughs> because of the fact that he was so divine, people would stop in the street and start worshiping him, despite not knowing which divinity he was. They just knew that he was divine and they started worshiping him. So, Lycon... That sounds like it was written by Zeus. <laughs> and does. he was like, they all just stopped and worshipped me. Look, at they were kissing <laughs> my toes in the street. Like, I mean, he was trying to disguise himself, so it was yeah. kind of against him. But no one in Arcadia knew which god he was. So, King Lycon devised a banquet that he invited the divine man to. King Lycon decided that to figure out which god it was, that he would sacrifice one of his children and cook them to serve to this divine man. Um, That's, I guess, one way to determine which god is which. <laughs> or just check his ID. Aren't you Zeus the god? Yep. Well, <laughs> Zeus in particular is a god who hates child sacrifices. So... 
So it's a low blow. This the, guy's not mischievous. He's a murderer. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> of his own child. Well, he had over 50 sons, supposedly. That's too many kids, I think. I mean, he had a lot of wives, so it makes sense. Use a ho. Use a Zeus immediately, as soon as he recognizes what the meal is, mm. he gets so angry that he throws his disguise off and he strikes down Lycan's sons. And Lycan tries to run out of the room, tries to get away. And he strikes Lycan and makes him half wolf, half beast. Mm -hmm. And then he resurrects the child that was sacrificed. And that child becomes the new king of Arcadia. That kid got a great deal out of this. <laughs> Zeus came in and said, not only am I going to resurrect him, I'm going to kill all of his other heirs, his other competitors. The kid's going to get all the power now. Pretty much. It doesn't say what happens to Lycon after that. I'm assuming he probably runs out and lives in the woods for the rest of his days. So that's the first werewolf we're ever mentioned uh, in ever? history. Yeah. And the other werewolf, or I wouldn't really call him a werewolf, I'd call him a lycanthrope, that we ever hear about in history is King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. This is a Bible guy, right? Mm -hmm. He's from the Bible. He's got a very bible -y sounding name. So the story goes in the book of Daniel that King Nebuchadnezzar attacks Israel, steals all their highly skilled artisans and tradespeople, and takes them to his country back in Babylon mm -hmm. and has them serve him. And Daniel is one of the wise men from Israel. And so Daniel has to compete for attention versus the other, like, astrologers, magicians, enchanters, all, all these other type of wise people, essentially, in different cultures. Astrologers and magicians <laughs> are considered wise people? And diviners. What is a diviner? <laughs> Basically, like, an oracle. Oh, okay. Um, so... Also a liar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, uh, respect all people's beliefs. Uh, yeah. He, he essentially has to compete for King Nebuchadnezzar's approval. So for one, that he doesn't get killed. But for two, to prove his god over the other people's gods, right? Because okay. that, that's what that people back in thing. the day were all about. They were all about proving their gods. King Nebuchadnezzar is plagued by nightmares and vivid dreams, and he doesn't understand the reason behind them. So he goes to the astrologers, the enchanters, the magicians, the diviners, and asks them for an interpretation of his dream. I'll give you a, a quick rundown. His dream is essentially about a tree, and this beautiful tree serves all these animals and it's doing really well and it's so gorgeous and a holy being from the sky comes down commands the tree to be cut down and spreads all the livestock or all the animals underneath it and the the stump is held down by iron and brass so Nebuchadnezzar goes to the magicians first and asks them for a reasoning and they can't find any good reasoning or their reasons aren't very solid to Nebuchadnezzar. You mean to tell me that all their little card tricks couldn't turn up anything <laughs> about his dreams? <laughs> <laughs> Is so, this your card? <laughs> so Nebuchadnezzar goes to David and asks him for an interpretation of the dream. This is Daniel's interpretation. Your majesty saw a holy one, a messenger, coming down from heaven and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump, bound with iron and bronze, in the grass of the field, while its roots remain in the ground. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the wild animals until seven times pass by for him. And then it came to be true, apparently, supposedly. Allegedly. So this is the, the other quote from the Bible in the book of Daniel. Immediately what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like the ox. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. So I, I don't know how this connects to werewolves. 
I, I wouldn't say that it necessarily connects to werewolves. I would say it more connects to lycanthropes and shape-shifting in general. Oh, okay. Right, because um, werewolves are technically shape-shifting creatures, but werewolves don't have a choice, right? Uh, Isn't that the thing where, like... <laughs> well, if you want to go by Snape's definition... <laughs> Turn to page 394. <laughs> if you want to go by <laughs> Harry Potter bullshit. <laughs> Lycanthrope is shape-shifting into some sort of animal. It's not necessarily a wolf. It could be a bear, uh, a lion, a tiger, a panther. Um, in d d lore, a raven, an eagle. It could be many things. So those are our two origin yeah, people. That's- that turned into werewolves or lycanthropes. Uh, werewolves and lycanthrop- uh, lycanthropy came about around the same times, right? Yeah. They're intertwined in some myths, but they're not necessarily the same. All werewolves are lycanthropes, but not all lycanthropes are werewolves. In France, in the 1500s, there was a big spike in werewolves. In like the medieval times, they're usually described more as... <laughs> they're described as mostly human. But uh, sometimes they're described as shape-shifting creatures that go back and forth. So in the medieval times, they believed that it was a choice? I think so. Or that, like, insanity came upon you and then you shape-shifted, essentially. Because wasn't it intertwined with witchcraft? Um, Some of it was. Not all of it. In the 1500s in France, there were the werewolf trials. Uh, where several murderers, specifically and especially of children, uh, were hunted down and made to pay for their crimes. This is including, but not limited to, Pierre Burgo, Michel Verdum, Gailis Garner, the tailor of Chalons, and Jean Grenier. Unlikely that we pronounced any of those names correctly. (laughs) Probably not. (laughs) There's quite a few in these trials. This is basically the Salem witch trials, but with werewolves. Yeah, so... I'm not sure exa- exactly how they tested them or anything, but they were murderers that essentially went to trial for their murders. <laughs> Seems pretty fair. <laughs> this led to the development of the book, the 1865 Book of Werewolves, which I really want to get my hands on a copy because it's so interesting. I'll leave a link in the description to the online uh, scanned version of the book. It is so incredibly interesting. This book spread the belief that lycanthrope was a mental illness. In fact, it states, the change of shape existed only in the disorganized brain of the insane. That is a direct quote. So they thought that you could only become a lycanthrope if you were crazy. Yeah, if you're insane. It, like, came along with the insanity. Kind of like the whole Wendigo thing. Like, they were insane. Or Therefore, they were like, they're a creature now. Uh, like, <laughs> I just don't see the logical connection. You know what I mean? Of, like, if you're insane, you have to turn into a terrifying creature that murders things. Because we can't comprehend why a person would murder another person at this point in history. Specifically, uh, Jean Grenier, the, the last lady of the werewolf trials that I talked about, mm-hmm. she was... Uh, mentally handicapped. Oh. And so... Wow, that's really sad. Wait, it, when you say mentally, what kind of handicapped? I'm... I didn't look. <laughs> I didn't try is to it, check. Is it one of the ones where we can't say what kind it is without being offensive? Uh, probably, considering it was the 1500s. It's really sad. But she killed people, so like... Well, not okay, that it's sad. a little less sad. <laughs> like, Specifically, ooh. she killed a lot of children, so... Ah, Along with this period in the 1500s, along with the werewolf trials, up in Germany at the time, specifically Bedburg, Germany, there was a man by the name of Peter Stubb. And originally he was thought to be a peaceful and upstanding guy. Um, He was a widower with two kids. He seemed pretty chill. He was rich. Pretty standard rich white guy, basically. (laughs) Yeah, lived in a rural community wasn't a big deal. Around that time, it was the late 1500s, so around that time, uh, the Catholics and the Protestants were fighting to convert people in the city or in the little town. And soon after that, the Black Plague swept through and killed several people. I think because of everything else going on, Peter probably didn't think that other deaths would be noticed. Mm -hmm. Um, first it started with livestock, 
but eventually it was women and children that started going missing. And um, he ended up killing 16 people by the time that they caught him. Under torture, he finally confessed. So so his confession is a little bit suspect, to say the least. A bit. <laughs> but he claimed that he had practiced black magic since he was a child and that he made a pact with the devil so that he could uh, shapeshift and kill these people. Right. Essentially. And why would he confess to that part? They were only co- accusing him of murder, right? At the yeah. time. So why would he confess to all of that extra shit when they probably weren't asking him about that? I think because of all the religious stuff going on at the time, plus the sanitary conditions of their water. Let's don't call them sanitary conditions. The, I don't think the word sanitary well, existed that, that, yet. We haven't talked about this yet, but uh, there's actually a theory or a, a fairly decent theory about the reasoning behind why witches so widespread it was such a widespread theory was because of the fact that at the time people ate wheat like wheat uh products wheat bread and the wheat had grown a type of uh, lichen on it which that's not good has similar effects to lsd ah um, I see the issue. <laughs> and can make people hallucinate. Apparently a lot of people claim that they felt like demons inside of them and stuff. And and now these are, this is a theory about back then. Yeah. The theory is that uh, lichens grew on the wheat. And people thought that once they moved into the church, you know, they, they stopped having the, the symptoms of this stuff. Mm. And the reason that people stopped having the symptoms is because churches had uh, better amounts of money and were able to buy nicer bread. And the nicer bread was rye bread, which doesn't grow the lichens on it. And so, so literally it was just like choice of bread. <laughs> like bread preference could potentially get you really fucked up on an LSD trip. Yeah. So I think that may come into play a little bit in the 1500s specifically. Just tossing that in there. Proof, man. Don't do acid. You'll turn into a werewolf. (laughs) Here are some possible explanations for what werewolves could have been outside of... The ridiculous mythology. (laughs) Like I said, lichens on your wheat could have been part of the madness aspect, or people could have been mentally ill at the time. Um, Obviously, mental health wasn't regulated (laughs) back then. But on top of that, there are a couple other like disorders that happen with people, unfortunately. One being cutaneous porphyria. This is a disorder that causes an excess buildup of certain chemicals in the skin, which can darken it, cause rashes, blisters, and can also cause people to have sensitivity to light, anxiety, mental confusion, and seizures along with many other symptoms. So they because they were they didn't like light. Well, because they were it anxious. <laughs> because it causes mental confusion, it can cause uh-huh. seizures, it can cause sensitivity to light, and because it's a uh, excess buildup of certain chemicals in the skin, mm-hmm. uh, which can darken, cause rashes, blisters, mm-hmm. and it can also cause another condition called hypertrichosis. What is hypertrichosis? Hypertrichosis is the dubbed werewolf disease. The disorder causes excessive hair growth that isn't dependent on age, sex, or race. It can grow in patches or over the entire body, and it can happen at birth or over a time. It's very, very differed in why it happens. So hypertrichosis can happen because, or it can happen due to uh, malnutrition, anorexia, dieting, cancer, certain drugs, and bodybuilding. Wait, bodybuilding? <laughs> uh, Guys, don't bodybuild. You'll be a werewolf. Increasing in uh, vascular mass. So like your your blood and your muscles. And then decreasing in those things. So anorexia and mal- malnutrition. Which obviously during certain times in France and, and all over the world technically. Um, malnutrition there were, has been a, a very common thing. Yeah. A very common problem around the globe. So this could have also caused hypertrichiosis and caused someone to look werewolfish 
in some aspect. Their hair is super irregular. Mm -hmm. They sound kind of emaciated a little bit. I definitely see why someone would confuse that with a werewolf as it's transforming. In the more medieval times, they're more a person. They thought that these people were turning into werewolves at night and shit. Yeah. But in more recent sightings, they're more just a beast. Like we were talking about shapeshifters, there are some mythological reasons as well, if you'd like to hear them. So in the Greek and biblical texts, there are sightings of where fallen angels or the Greek gods have sex with animals. And this creates half people, half animal hybrids like the centaur, which is... (laughs) Which is one of the possible things that they talk about being... um... No. (laughs) No. That's the dumb theory. It's stupid. It's it's definitely not the fallen angels and Greek gods banging a sheep. (laughs) Well, well, if you don't like that one, you'll definitely not like the other one either. Oh, God. So in Native American lore, specifically in the Cheyenne tribe... There's a sect of men known as dogmen who were believed to be able (laughs) to attune to their... Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. It's just that all I can picture when you say dogmen is men sniffing their own asses (laughs) (laughs) and just dragging their ass on the floor (laughs) and just doing dog shit. You know what I mean? Dog shit. (laughs) Uh, The sect of dogmen were believed to be able to be so attuned to their spirit animal that they could turn into them. Yeah. <laughs> so is it like that Brother Bear situation where yeah, it's like, kinda. he put on a necklace and then he turned into an eagle and flew away and scoured the sky? Specifically with the Native American people in the Cheyenne tribe, dogmen don't attack people. Oh, okay. Um, so these the Native American theory is much nicer. Yeah, they're very peaceful. It really is a brother bear situation. Yeah, um, it, it's much more nice and Disney-esque. Yeah. <laughs> In recent times, there have been many alleged sightings, uh, which I guess you wouldn't think because, like, obviously during medieval times and before then, you know, there were a lot of reasons that people could have thought that some creature was out in the wilderness out to get them. But we think about modern times as being like much more logical, but yeah, we have computers, we have cell phones. Why would we think that werewolves exist? But I don't think that these sightings necessarily are werewolves or like not, not what the medieval and the original people would have thought was a werewolf. It does show you that, the persistence of this idea of yeah. this idea of a wolf man or a dog man mm-hmm. is it's very pervasive throughout human history it's been a thing since greek mythology so that's pretty damn old our oldest recent story is in wexford county michigan and this sighting was recorded in 1887 it was recorded by two lumberjacks who saw a man with a dog's head it's funny to picture two lumberjacks being like, a man with a dog head. Ah! Like, terrifying. <laughs> like, dude, you cut down trees for a living. Aren't bears a big problem for you? <laughs> That's what tells you that it clearly wasn't a bear because, like, they would have known what a bear looked like. Yeah. They were lumberjacks. And this was in Wexford County, which is, like, the very top of the lower peninsula of Michigan. Then later, uh, in 1937, Robert Fortney was attacked by one of five standing wolves is how he described them. And this was in Paris, Michigan. I didn't know there were so many of these in Michigan, and now I'm scared. (laughs) I don't believe in werewolves, but if there's a wolf-like creature running around Michigan killing people, I'm in danger. Similar reports were made in Allegan County in the 1950s and in Manistee and Cross Village in 1967. These are all places in Michigan as well. The lore of the Dogman says the creature would return every decade on a year ending in seven. If you want to hear more, you gotta look up the song, The Legend, which was played on the radio in 1987. It talks about the creature in more specific sightings. I looked it up. It sounds like a Texan goth teenager 
was trying to make goth music for the first time. Imagine Johnny Cash talk singing over the whole thing. (laughs) No, it's more like a poetry bash. (laughs) (laughs) While Michigan went crazy over the dog man, in Wisconsin there was the sighting of a beast. Specifically, the beast of Bray Road. Originally sighted in 1936, just 40 miles away from Elkhorn, sightings on Bray Road all happened around Halloween in 1991. All happened around Halloween? Yeah. In 91? Yeah. You mean after wolf heads were the Halloween costume? Yes, but I... I mean, unless you're really dedicated, I don't think that people would have believed this. Specifically, there were a couple recorded sightings of seeing this creature eat roadkill. There was a specific sighting in which a woman who was riding on Bray Road... She was coming to the intersection of Hospital Road. And when she was doing that, she went to go change the channel on the radio. And when she did that, she accidentally hit a cat. And so she pulled over and she went to go check for the animal. She didn't see the cat anywhere. But instead, she saw a creature in the woods that lunged at her. So she ran back into her car fast enough. Uh, The creature grabbed onto the trunk of her car. And as she drove off, it slipped off because it had been, like, rainy and wet during that time of the season. And she said she didn't get a great look at it, but it did, like, try to attack her. That particular sighting could have been anything. Yeah. Basically. (laughs) But it wasn't something she recognized. So this first sighting was published in the newspaper of Elkhorn. And that got more people to tell about their encounters. Uh, So this specific encounter that I'm going to talk about is a specific quote from a child who was at a sleepover. He was in his own home at the sleepover, but like he had other other kids over. So this is just a snippet from his little party. I went back into our sunroom and saw something crouched over and illuminated through the brush and the orange streetlight. I'm not sure how to describe the body posture. You know how when you're about to throw up, you hunch over? on your knees and palms. It was similar to that. Its breaths were so deep and so heavy, you could see its chest heaving from that distance. We had a 140-pound Akita who stood six feet on its hind legs. I could easily tell that whatever this was dwarfed my Akita. I also know that it wasn't any type of dog or wolf. Its hind legs were thick and muscular like a man's, but its body tapered at the abdomen and head like a wolf or canine. Later in the story, he talks about calling for his dad, and his dad's a military vet and like like take notes kind <laughs> yeah, of person. but got kind of freaked out by the creature. Oh, so him and his dad saw it. That does lend a little bit of credibility. Some explanations for the more current version of a werewolf. So these are ones hypothesized by other people and myself. It could be a bear suffering from mange or starvation. Obviously, wolves don't have the same fur pattern as a bear would. So they thought maybe like the mange could be that or bears when they're malnourished, their skeletal structure looks more canine. Other possible reasons people don't know what this beast is could be like an undiscovered wild dog, could be a prehistoric creature like a wahila. The more supernatural reasonings could be a Bigfoot that was mistaken as a werewolf. But I feel um, like, how would you mistake those two? I mean, if it's a big shadow that's running at you, I don't know. No- Another mythological or supernatural reasoning could be prehistoric or mythological creatures like the Amarok from the Inuit tribes, which, again, was a large dog creature. I think we can just say <clears throat> all of these are large wolf creatures. Large wolf creatures. I don't really feel like either of the disorders that I listed are that convincing. They're not full range because you know they talked about them being shapeshifters not just one side or the other right and i thought like you know maybe like someone has the werewolf disease and they just like shave but there was one day they just didn't feel like it and they were really hairy and like scared people i really i really like the lichen theory about the mushrooms or the growths on the wheat I, I really like that theory. I, I think you just like it because it involves everyone tripping balls. <laughs> but I think it's the most convincing theory because it's also what supposedly caused the witch trials. So I feel like 
especially like with werewolf trials of the 1500s in France, I feel like that's probably the biggest contributor outside of also probably people being malnourished and possibly having disorders and diseases that may have been more common back then than they are today. Versus everyone's brains connected. Just all had this <laughs> hysteria at once. You'd be surprised how hive-minded humans can be. For the more recent ones, I don't know. I I think there could be some sort of creature that we've never actually like fully documented or encountered that it could be because there are plenty of prehistoric animals that have gone extinct that we ended up finding. And we were like, oh, we thought these were long gone, you know? I think it could be some real creature, but maybe not quite in the aspect that they're thinking it is. As far as the medieval ones go, I'm with you on the LSD thing, just because it does seem more like an actual environmental cause would happen that would cause people to think crazy things like that. The heavy religiosity at the time and the yeah. lack of medical science. And mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things that cause people to think that there were witches and werewolves and, and that's crazy kind of nonsense. As far as the recent ones go, I think the most likely theory was probably the bear with mange. I mean, there's probably a lot of hungry bears. Bears with mange, you think they look at the reflections of themselves in the water like we look at ourselves in the mirror, and they just feel like the same unconfidence as like a bald man from a hair cream commercial? I would feel pretty sad if that was the case. Is your bear baldness bearing down on you? Don't worry, we have Bearsley. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what they're going through. They're having commercials pitched right at them, just directly out in the woods being like, oh, try out my new product, and then they end up getting mauled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think ultimately werewolves, uh, like a lot of other mythological creatures, are, are just a bunch of nonsense. I mean, me too. <laughs> but like, I like finding the, the level of where it could sort of kind of be real. Like... Like, because I feel like there has to be some truth to all mythology, right? Because, like, why else would they come up with those stories? Like, where, where, would, where would the bullshit come from if there was no bullshit fountain somewhere? Like, There's gotta be a bullshitter. <laughs> there's gotta be some truth in it. Some little piece of gold in that entire river, you know? So you think there's a seed of truth to every um, conspiracy theory, every mythological story? I feel, I feel like there has to be some small amount of truth to each one. Just because, like, if there's not, where, why, why would anyone even make it up, you know? Like, For what, shits and giggles. Humans have always been mischievous. 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 But I am so glad you let me talk on this topic. I, as a child, was completely obsessed with werewolves. I had a werewolf journal that was like metal. It came from Hot Topic. It was like my only goth item I had as a kid and I treasured it. So I really appreciate the fact that you let me dig into this one even though it was a giant pain in the ass because there is there are so many sightings and stories. I cannot explain to you guys how much there is. Like please look into the links that I Put down below there's so much more to werewolves than i could fit into yeah. this tiny ass episode <laughs> this is the outro but we don't normally film outros 12 hours after we recorded the uh, the rest of the video <laughs> keep your crosses ready your holy water on ya and stay safe mine's empty i'm oh, gonna no. die <laughs> um just as a little thank you to you guys uh, for watching and uh, if you are enjoying this whole little series that we are starting to do um, I am going to be giving away each of the art pieces after the episode on the next episode so when this episode airs go check out my Instagram at Wivernhearted Inc and sign up to possibly win the Windigo art piece uh, all you have to do is tag three friends in the comments below and I will announce who wins it within the next episode after this one. And then, obviously... What if they don't have three friends? <laughs> what if they're like us and they only have two? <laughs> Each. If you only have two friends, tag two friends. <laughs> if you don't have, what if they have no friends? If you have no friends... Tag some cats.
Sure. <laughs> you won't get the prize, but at least you'll have some cats on your wall. That'll enter you in to possibly win the Windigo. If um, your sob story's good enough, we might just go to your house and give you a little hug. <laughs> but after the next three weeks, because our governor just issued a stay-at-home order. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe out there. Please. And... Wash your hands, you nasties. <laughs>